brilliantly there. The goal scorer against Chelsea might be able to create something here. Finds Augustine. Big chance for him. He's actually scored. Let's go. We've scored against Pep Guardiola City. Shipping this one for Augustine. He's on a hat-trick. He's gotten through. Goes for goal. He's actually done it. 88th minute of this game. Augustine with the hat-trick. So here we are back again, episode number 4 of the Leeds United Career Mode series. Last episode was a pretty important episode for us, especially on the transfers front as we wrapped up all our signings with deadline day. Of course, this window has been super successful for us, signing the likes of David Brooks and Ketia from Arsenal, Saka as well on loan and even Juan Foyt. So we've done some pretty impressive transfer business already in this series. On the pitch though is where we've proven all the doubters wrong. I mean, surprisingly, we're 6th in the Premier League right now which is absurd but we've been unbelievable especially against the big boys and things are going well for us and let's hope we can keep that up in today's episode also a lot of you guys were asking me to get the player faces sorted for this series so i've gone ahead and done exactly that with the help of the realism mod and look at that we've got leo messi with a new player face and it looks so freaking realistic and of course we've got player faces for our new signings like Enketia as well who now looks pretty realistic as well as Bukayo Saka so yeah the new player face mod is definitely fantastic I don't know why I didn't install it previously but hey we've got it now this is going to be an episode where we make a lot of progress especially in the Premier League and also a lot of youth academy stuff to go through as well so if you guys are excited for another episode of this series keep the support coming in with a like on the video subscribe if you're new around here and let's get this started time for a press conference and you guys know the drill drop in your questions in the comment section to have a chance of being featured in the video do you plan on buying augustine for a permanent deal next season that is a very good question augustine last episode did something extraordinary scoring a hat trick against manchester city and getting us all three points he was simply sensational in that game and honestly if he keeps this form up I don't see why we shouldn't be going for him next season. His valuation is about 11 million, so maybe come end of season his value could go up to like 15, 16 million. And for that price, I think he'll be worth it. So it all depends if he can maintain this kind of form in the Premier League. Three games played so far, four goals for him. If he continues on this path, next season we might just have to go for him and make him a Leeds United player another very interesting comment change your formation to a 3-5-2 because then you can play Ben White Liam Cooper and Juan Foyt then play Saka as a left mid because that is his natural position also you've got experience playing this formation with Bayer Leverkusen by the way I love this career mode and can't wait for future episodes I'm glad a lot of you guys do enjoy this series I really appreciate the support so back to the comment that's actually a very good shout. Now, you guys have noticed we've struggled against the smaller teams. We've been, you know, struggling to create chances against them. So maybe playing in a bit of a more attacking way against the smaller teams could be the play. And that's where the 3-5-2 formation comes into play. And that's what I'm going to try and do in this episode. Against some of the bottom half teams in the Premier League, we'll give this formation a go and see how it works. It gets all our defenders in the team and also it gives Saka to play in his natural position. We get to start Enketia along with Augustine, Pablo Hernandez in that cam role. This formation might just really, really work well for us in certain circumstances. We'll give it a go. Next up, what position do you expect to finish with a fantastic start to this season? Sixth in the Premier League at the moment with three wins and two draws. Honestly, after having such a good start to the season, I'm looking at a top half finish. I think we can do it. I think we can finish top 10 in the Premier League in our first season with Leeds. It is definitely possible. We've seen other newly promoted sides do it in the Premier League like Sheffield and all. So I'm confident. Of course, we need to maintain our form and also start winning against the smaller teams if we've got any chance of making it into the top half of the table. But yeah, that is what I'm aiming for now at this point. But with that press conference done, let's move on. What an episode it was for Jean-Kevin Augustin as he scored a hat-trick against Manchester City in the Premier League. And it was simply sensational. He had a bit of support with David Brooks having a phenomenal game. But when you score a hat-trick, of course, you're going to pick up the player of the episode award. I know I just spoke about the player face mod, but honestly, this is fantastic. I'm so glad we've got this in the series. And if I'm not wrong, there are about 600 new player faces added to this uh, series now and which is absolutely fantastic Messi, De Jong, 
Most of the Barcelona players now have proper player faces. Of course, a lot of the Premier League teams' players have now proper player faces. And I'm sure you guys will notice that in-game. So, I'm glad we've got that sorted. Here's a quick update on our season goals. Of course, I just spoke about a potential top half finish in the Premier League. Let's hope we can push towards that. Calvin Phillips has been in good form. We just got to hope he can keep that up. Only one game so far this season. We've had over 55% possession. I'm hoping we'll make more progress towards that today. And David Brooks, let's hope he can just keep his form up. So we are starting the episode off with some Premier League action as we take on Burnley away from home. Now, if you've watched my career modes for a long time, you'd know that this is the team I struggle the most against. But since they are 17th in the league with just four points... This might be the first game where we actually beat a smaller team in this series, so let's hope it'll happen. But I am I'm, I just get so frustrated playing against Burnley. But yeah, let's just hope for the best. The 4-1-4-1 formation has proven to be a big failure against the small team, so let's give the three at the back formation a go the Bielsa way and see how things work. We've got Liam Cooper, Foyth, and Ben White starting all together for the first time in this series. I'm very eager to see how that works out. Brooks and Saka on either side. Brooks might need to be doing a bit more defensive work in this one. We'll see how that goes. Pablo Hernandez playing as our number 10. And Ketia and Augustine starting. Let's see how this works. I genuinely hate whenever we come up against Burnley because it is just always such a frustrating game to get through with because of their style of play. It's completely fair. It's part of the game, but I just hate playing against them. Let's hope with this 3-5-2 formation, we can get the better of them. Pablo Hernandez, good pass into Enquetia. And that's what you want to see as he releases Brooks with a phenomenal pass. But Brooks, does he have the pace though? That is good defending right there from Burnley. But did you guys see that pass of Enquetia? I didn't know he had that in his locker. Oh no, Burnley with a big chance here. We've got to defend this. We've got to defend this. Challenge comes in from Liam Cooper and it had to be perfect and I'm glad it was. Free kick for Burnley. It's a good ball and where's my defense? Click with a brilliant clearance. So far, it's been all Burnley. Not the start I was expecting. Another cross comes in. Ben White helps us out defensively and gets it away. Oh, Juan Foyt now bringing the ball forward. Good play to find Enquetia who does incredibly well to release click. And now Bukayo Saka could be through. And I'm sure he's on side. Still Saka sees the run of Augustine. Good touch. Shoots. And that's in. Augustine just cannot stop scoring. Bukayo Saka as well made the perfect run. And against Burnley, and I must say against the run of play as well, we've taken the lead. Can we finally beat a smaller team in the Premier League? Let's go, man. That is brilliantly done from Leeds United. Saka's pass to Augustine. And also, his first touch was simply sublime. I don't know what the Burnley keeper was doing position-wise because he was all over the place. But that was one hell of a finish. And Augustine continues to make a bigger claim that we should, you know, sign him for next season. Let's go. We're leading 1-0 already. Immediately after conceding, Burnley with a cross. The header is brilliant. It's off the cross. But oh my god, get it away. Come on, man. How is my player not winning the header there? That is the most typical Burnley goal you'll ever see. Honestly. Oh, it's 1-1 and game on. I'm so frustrated with myself for conceding a goal like that. Here's Brooks dropping deep to help out his team. And that is a phenomenal pass for Calvin Phillips. And now Brooks gets it. Space to shoot. Goes for goal. Big save there from Nick Pope. But David Brooks, he's getting into this game. If he can hit top form, I'm sure we'll get the win. Oh, McNeil is making a very good run here. Ben White's stamina for some reason is completely gone. Cross comes back in the header. Off the post again. That is a big let off there. We could easily be 2-1 down. They might actually still make it 2-1. Kiko Casilla needs to make a save. He does with the rebound. I Come on, man. How do Burnley get all the luck in the world? Like, honestly, this is the second time they're scoring a bullshit goal, man. I don't get it. 2-1 down to Burnley. This is why I hate playing against them. Now we've got an uphill task for the second half. It is now Augustine. Fantastic first touch. Still Augustine. Good score here. Goes for goal. Come on, Nick Pope. How are you stopping that? Still 2-1 Burnley. Not gonna lie, Saka is absolutely exhausted from going up and down the pitch for the entirety of that first half. So on comes Alioski. We'll also bring on Roberts for maybe Click and we'll play Hernandez in a deeper role because I want to win this game. Also on comes Bamford for, of course, Enketia. Let's hope that works. No problems here for us. It's Darun. Another chance for Burnley and it's another goal. I don't know what to do. They're literally the worst team to play against. For some reason, it feels like we're up against Barcelona and not Burnley, man. And there's literally nothing we can do. 3-1 up for them. And I think they're going to get the three points from this one. So frustrating. I just hate playing against Burnley. I'm glad we're done with this away fixture against Burnley at Turf Moor. Because it's just so annoying. Here's McNeil. Cross comes in. Another goal for them, probably. Yeah, it has to be a freaking rebound as well. I swear this game. I genuinely just want to stop playing FIFA now because 
Good lord, I, if, oh, I just, I don't even know what to say now, man. I'm that angry. Facing Burnley just puts me in a bad mood, like, honestly. Most annoying team to play in career mode. I'm sure you guys have experienced this as well. Every decision goes their way half the time. And they get, like, all the weird rebounds happen for them. It's, oh, it's just painful to play. I'm genuinely glad this game has come to an end, because it was painful to get through it. Burnley beat us 4-1, our worst defeat of this series, and I guess we got to get used to it because we're not the best team in the competition, nowhere near, and we're going to have such incidents in this series. We've just got to pick ourselves up and move on. We've now got a Carabao Cup game against Southampton, which I am going to simulate, and I'm going to use my second team for this one, so I am really not sure how this is going to go. Our second team isn't all that good at all. I mean, look at that. We don't even have, like, proper centre-backs in here, so... It is a bit worrisome. We'll see what happens, though. If we can win this game, I'll be incredibly surprised. But let's see what happens. Leeds Southampton. We got through on penalties. I'll absolutely take that. Bamford scoring. That'll be huge for his confidence. 4-3 on pens. Let's go. Back to the important stuff is we've got another Premier League game. This time against Crystal Palace away from home. And I want to win this game. I mean, enough of all the losses we've taken to the, you know, smaller teams. It's now time to respond and win big, especially after that embarrassing defeat to Burnley. The three at the back formation is going to need some time and effort to, you know, get working. So for now, we'll stick with the 4-1-4-1 because I really want to get back to winning ways here against Palace. So this is the team that I've gone for. Brooks, Augustine, Saka, all of our important players starting. I need three points here. Wilfred Zaha now looks inside for Jordan Ayew. He's done me there. He's done me there. Goes for gold. Thankfully, Kiko Kassia with a strong save. Oh, this is also going to be a similar game to that Burnley one. I can feel it, but I'm hoping this time we come out on top. Oh, look at this pace Saka's got here to work with on the counter-attack, and he's going to go through. Bukayo Saka, with all the pace in the world, here he goes. Could put in a ball back in, but he's left-footed, so I'm a bit worried. He does put the ball back in. Pablo goes for goal. How is Pablo Hernandez not scoring that? A big opportunity wasted. Saka did literally everything right in that instance. Oh, he's done really well there. Brooks has caught this Palace defense snapping. Still David Brooks. Brilliant run. Can he score though? That's the question now. Nah, he was lacking that extra bit of pace towards the end as Tompkins recovers. Sees Click making a good run. I could feed this one for Augustine who's done brilliantly here. Still Augustine. Goes for the pass backwards for Bukayo Saka. Shoots, but it's off target. We're creating chances, but... That final shot isn't just working out. Saka does well, and we could release him again. Calvin Phillips finds him perfectly, and here goes Bukayo Saka. Brilliant pace here from him. Still Saka could go for the cutback, does so. Has to be a goal, no way. How has Brooks not scored that? Saka once again doing absolutely everything right, and we got let down by the finish. Still a chance, Van Hand Holt looks inside for MacArthur. Back to Zaha. It's brilliant football from uh, Crystal Palace. I'm, I'm glad we got it away, but... It's just the fact that they've got an extra bit of quality with the likes of Ayu and Zaha that we just don't have. And that's really going to cost us. On the ball right now, we can't let him cross the ball. We have done well. Eiling has defended that brilliantly, but they still get the ball, which I don't get how. Now a chance for them with Kuyate on the ball. Back to Van Hanold. Long spell of possession here for Palace, and they're trying to bring the ball inwards with Meyer. Like this, this team, they've got a lot of quality, and it shows. Kuyate now. Look at how well they're keeping possession. Still Meyer. Still Mayer, Calvin Phillips finally puts in a challenge, but they still get the ball in. Kassia thankfully makes the save there. Oh, this is not good. This is not good. The control was phenomenal. Good cross coming in for Jordan Ayew. That's handball from him. Oh, I'm glad that didn't went in, otherwise I'd be fuming. And there you have it, full time against Palace. The game ends in a nil-nil draw. Considering how bad we've been against the bottom half teams, I'll take a nil-nil draw, honestly. Okay, we've now got some really huge news. Our first ever monthly scouting update, and I'm really gassed for this, to see what kind of players we get. 39 to 45 potential. What? 56 to 82. Okay, Lyndon Harris is showing some good signs. We will sign him up, but good lord are these awful players. Like, what even is this? Um, okay, I'm just going to quickly reject all of these players. Let's take a quick look at the player we just signed. 52 rated Lyndon Harris, 68 to 96 potential. Now, that is a big gap. We'll see next month what the scout report looks like on him and, you know, how good he is. But promising, definitely promising. Back to more Premier League stuff as we're up against Aston Villa at home. Now, we've dropped way too many points in this episode already. So, this is the game I want to win. We're playing at Elland Road at home in front of our home fans. 
This needs to be a win. We need to bounce back from that draw and the loss before. Come on. It's good to see players like Saka and Augustine already go up in their overall. That is brilliant. For this game, I'm benching Pablo Hernandez because I feel like his form has been a bit off. So Roberts comes in his spot. We've still got Saka, Augustine, Brooks all starting. And also, I kind of wanted to start Juan Foyt instead of Liam Cooper. So we'll get that done. Phillips is going to captain the team for now. So let's also put Foyt on that right side and Ben White on the left. And there you go. That is our team. Leeds Aston Villa. Let's get into it. Lovely pass into Augustine Spart. And now it's Click. Big chance here for him. Can he score though? Click. No way. Those are chances Click normally takes based on this season. But he's missed that one. Ah, not the best of starts to this game. Here's Saka on the ball now it is. Roberts goes down. That's got to be a free kick. Give me the free kick. Okay. Chance for us from about 20 yards out to score. And it's a yellow card for Villa as well. Unfortunately, we don't have Pablo Hernandez when we need him the most. 23 yards. Calvin Phillips is going to take this one. Can he put it in the back of the net? Let's see. It's actually pretty decent and off the post. Are you kidding me? Two big chances for us in this first half. Click couldn't score and now Phillips hits the post. That is so unlucky. Oh, come on. He's completely turned me there. Casilla thankfully makes the save there. Fair enough, Aston Villa. They probably deserved a goal from that attack. I just got completely spun by the Aston Villa attacker. This, this has got a lot of open space here for us as Augustine could be through on goal. 1v1. Has to do better here and he does. Augustine with the goal. His sixth Premier League goal of the season if I'm not wrong. And let's go. Leeds United have taken the lead against Aston Villa. For a moment, I thought I was going to definitely bottle this because the Aston Villa defender was closing in but it was a really, really calm, composed finish from the Frenchman. I mean, take a look at that. The defender had closed in but Augustine got his shot off and that was in the back of the net. 1-0 up against Villa. Let's push on and look for the second goal now. Aston Villa could have an opportunity here. They've broken through. Maybe a cross. Yes, it is. And oh, come on. Alioski, why are you leaving your man open like that? Literally moments after scoring, we've conceded a silly goal once again. I swear this game, honestly, 1-1 and game on. It is now Calvin Phillips. Look at how deep Aston Villa are. But the pass to Augustine was brilliant. Goes for goal. Oh my God, Augustine. We've got to sign him next season. I'm sorry. We just got to... What on earth was that for a finish? 2-1 Leeds United. This man is single-handedly carrying us right now. Unbelievable. Off the cross by an in. We've got to take a look at that goal again because the finish was just something special. And also Calvin Phillips' pass into his path, breaking the lines, was surreal as well. Goal line technology just about going in. Let's go, man. What a finish from Augustine. Why didn't they show us another replay? I don't know, but his seventh goal in the Premier League now. There's no way we're conceding before halftime. No, just, just no. Header. Oh my God, what is going on? Just get it away, Ben White. What are you doing? Alioski with the block. Just, just get the ball away. Good Lord, man. What even is this game? It, it's, it's kind of like the AI get a boost whenever you score. But man, that was so close to being 2 all. We survived the first half, leading 2-1. Second half, I want to secure the win. Click. Sees Bukayo Saka in space and we know how effective he can be in such situations. Brings it inside. Still Saka now. He might want to go for goal on his own. Off the post as well. We've hit the post or crossbar like twice in this game. Brutal man. We could be like 3-1 or 4-1 up in this game. Oh look at Aston Villa committing way too many players forward and this is dreamland for Saka. Look at the space he's got to exploit. Good pass into Roberts' path and now it's Brooks. Big chance for him. Gets it inside but oh, the skill move wasn't good enough to beat the Villa defender. Oh, this has been stressful, man. We've managed to hold on and this was so freaking stressful, but we got it done. 2-1 against Aston Villa, an important win for us in the Premier League. Whew, how tough was this game? And would you look at that? We just about kept 55% possession in this game and that helps us with our objectives. Remarkable performance by Augustine today. What are your thoughts? Honestly, this guy is just crazy good. I never expected him to be this good, but he's growing in his overall super quickly without any training. And he's scoring goals for fun. Like, it's genuinely mad how good he is. We're 7th in the Premier League right now with that result, which is just brilliant. Our next game is against West Brom, who are in the relegation zone. So, I'm going to simulate this. They've not won a single game so far this season. We could take advantage. So, it's a 1-1 draw for us against West Brom. I'm not going to lie a bit disappointed with the result because I feel like this is a game where we could have won. Anyways, Brooks did get on the score sheet, which is nice. Look at that training working out fantastically for us as Foyt has gone up by one in his overall. He's now one of our highest rated players behind Phillips and Brooks, so that's nice to see. So we end off the episode being 8th in the Premier League, which is genuinely crazy. Being just 4 points off Manchester United is a bit
bit mad. And next episode, we've got that fixture as Leeds take on Man United. It's going to be a historic game and a really important one for the series. We know the rivalry between the two teams. I think it's going to be an epic fixture, which I can't wait for. Decent episode for our season objectives. A bit of progress with the taking control objective, as well as the next gigs challenge. Let's go. Player of the episode discussion. I honestly only see two nominees for this one, Augustine and Saka. The two of them were absolutely brilliant in this episode. Augustine in particular won us a game single-handedly. He's just phenomenal, man. It's between the two of them. Let me know in the comments section who you think should win at the player of the episode award but with that time to wrap up another episode of the leeds united career mode series hopefully you're enjoying this one a lot of progress made in this episode we're going to keep that theme up for the next few episodes as well if you're enjoying the series drop a like on the video subscribe if you're new around here and well i'll catch you all next time